everyone. Welcome back to Tax Riders. In this video, we want to discuss WSL again, and I want to show you how you can use it in another application to, to build and compile Seagal programs, this time on Windows. Let's dive into it. Okay, I said this time on Windows because, yeah, I previously discussed W, sorry, Seagal, the compilation of Seagal based programs on Linux in details. This video is not intended to show everything again. I want, I will follow the instructions, but this time on WSL. And I want to show you that using WSL, you can follow the same principles. And in the end, you can run it under Windows, although this is not a native Windows binary, but still you are in Windows and you can take advantage of the power of libraries that might be a bit difficult to compile in Windows or they are not available at all in Windows. While you, you, you are, for example, imagine you are forced to use Windows or you prefer to use Windows for any reason. So you are not limited to use only Windows based programs, especially when you are using scientific computing stuff, you are doing computational modeling, you need to work with Linux. And in the previous video, I showed you how to set up WSL and how powerful it is to, to, to run native Linux programs. And in this video, I want to apply it to more advanced use case. And I want to build uh, Seagal programs, the Seagal program that I built in the set up your uh, scientific computing environment series. So let's go back to, to, to that series. So this is the Microsoft web browser. So talkswriters.com. was not possible to press control enter I don't know I don't care but uh, yeah so uh, now I want to go to the github and then environment setup and these are the codes this is uh, the, the um, yeah, build Seagal based programs using uh, CMake. So uh, these are the process that we need to follow. But at this, uh, in the end, I want to build uh, this program, heart.cpp. So let's let let me first download it. And uh, as you can remember, uh, as you may remember, actually, uh, in the end, it generates uh, the, the heart like uh, uh, mesh, final element mesh. So I go to the raw. Uh, Let's see how I can save it. Yeah, there is save as. It's a bit weird browser generally. So I save it on a desktop. It's a txt file. So yeah, I have it here and then I, I, I rename it to hard.cpp. And uh, yeah, that's, that's located on my desktop. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, I can put it here like the mesh test. I put it here and the heart. And then uh, on this folder, uh, as you may remember from the, the from that video, we need to download Seagal and uh, the boost. Uh, so I, I will follow this principle to follow this uh, the instruction, but this time on Windows. And I want to show you how uh, it's possible that that's very easy. That's very very easy because principle in 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 action in in uh, you know in in practice you are running things on on Linux kernel. So I, I, I let's let's download the Seagal and and the boost and hope that this um, yeah um, boost library Microsoft search engine can find it yeah so for the Seagal I go to the download and this time this is not Windows this is not Windows I'm we are still on Linux so we go for installing the Linux um, uh, tarballs or it says you can also download from github yeah that's it's easy to be installed and yeah instead of uh cloning the whole repository i uh, we go to download the releases as much easier this is what we did also already in the previous video uh, for setting up the Sega programs this is quite new version i prefer to go to the previous version which i i've already tested uh, for example, this one version 5.1, and 
and we download the, the tar wall or the zip file. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So I download the zip file of the of the Seagal. So scanning downloaded and also for the boost I click on the get boost and then uh, again we are on Linux so I download the Linux tarball compressed tarball and when the download is finished I can copy the downloaded zip file so you can see that I'm on Windows I do whatever I know the knowledge that I have on Windows and I work with the tools the, the, the file browser the Windows browser Sorry, Windows Explorer and this kind of stuff. And so the, the, the UI, the, 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 the web browsers that I have on Windows to deal with the programs that are natively built for Linux. So I copy that default, the, the libraries here on, on, on a Leaps uh, directory, let's say. And now it's the time to open uh, the Linux terminal. So I show, I told you before that right click and sh shift, uh, sorry, holding the shift key down and then right click and then you can open the Windows, uh, the Linux shell here or you can run it via the, the Windows PowerShell. So now I, we are in, inside a libs directory. As you can see that we have enabled the metadata. We configured WSL to be correctly linked with the Windows uh, file system. So now we are inside the uh, the lips folder so I can unzip the seagull uh, files unzip if you don't have unzip you can easily install it with apt so I, I unzip the seagull uh, uh, file which is actually the released version as you can see this is a simplified version of it is not uh, what we saw in the repository you can see the repository has much more files uh, number of files let's say but in this case this is a really um, uh, a simplified version of it that is that is actually a released version so it may take a bit long still because uh, Seagal is a huge library yeah, so it is finished uh, for the Seagal directory. You can see that this is the structure of the, the release version while the whole repository is much uh, uh, more comprehensive because this is actually the development um, repository. And then for the boost, uh, we also uh, unzip it, but this time with Tarbo because this is a GZ format. So with the tar command extract Z and then show me the files and for the boost so yeah it takes quite time i think boost is a very huge library and after it is over uh, we continue the, the process okay this is done and then uh, we need to install uh, a couple of more libraries but before that let's check that it is okay so boost and yeah this is uh what we needed so uh before building the, the hard.cpp, we need to install uh, two more libraries that are in this instruction, as you can see. So I installed this one, libgmp, password, and it says, yeah, it's getting installed. So first download and then the install, and also the second one. Very cool. And then we also need to have CMake. I think CMake is not installed because this is not part of the build essential uh, package. So we need to install it. And then the next step is generate the CMake lists file. So in the in the, the, the in the video that I discussed CMake, I, I talked about uh, I discussed that uh, that is what is. Uh, what this is all about the CMake list file in order to use CMake we need to generate this we need to have it but for Seagal programs we can use this script to to generate it that is uh, that is under the lips uh, Seagal and then the scripts directory so here we need to to call this one so in the directory for for the root directory which is actually the mesh now we need to call lips uh, 
seagull, I think it's the capital seagull, and then the scripts, and then you know, it was seagull, uh, what was it? Uh, create, oops, create CMake lists. So I generate the CMake lists file, and this is now ready to be to be uh, used to to call CMake. As you can see, it says it asks it it, it looks for the seagull and boost, and now we need to provide it with the paths to those files to those programs or libraries via this command: seagull directory with these parameters and uh, boost root. So let's copy this one. And paste it here and now we want to modify the path uh, to to the files that we have for the leap for the boosts is here and then the build type is release and for the seagull it's here so we say some leaps and then the seagull 5 5.1 and yeah, that's all we need to do. Press enter and now Seagal, CMake will generate the make file for us. Let's see if it encounters any error. But yeah, we are we we, we don't we are not compiling for Windows, so I don't expect to have any error. Yeah, this is the same process that we followed for the procedure that we followed for uh, for installing it under Linux. And then now we have this CMake this make file. Uh, which is this one and now by calling make we can ask a GNU make to, to compile a GNU make and GCC to compile the program for us so let's wait for it, it may take quite yeah it, it, it doesn't take so long but uh, yeah it, it now generates the, the Linux binary for us so we need to wait a bit and yeah now it's done and as you can see we have the hard program here this is not Windows binary this is a Linux binary and I need to run it from Linux I call it and it generates this mesh file for us and now this is also a good time that I demonstrate for example other uh, that I said in the previous video other ported programs to Linux like Gmesh and for this one I will download the Windows binary and you can see that it works out of the box so I download it for Windows it starts to download it and then it goes to the download directory so here this is the um, uh, this is the uh, Gmesh file the Gmesh uh, ported to Windows so I can uh, unzip it drag and drop out of the zip file and then I can immediately run it. So you can see that this is also, as I said in the previous video, lots of programs are already ported to Linux, to Windows, sorry, from Linux to Windows, or they have, let's say, they have been developed with Windows version in mind by the developers. But as you can see, we have gmesh.exe here. It says that Windows security is getting activated on this, so I need to unblock it from the properties panel, and then it runs. And then uh, I want to open this hard mesh file, and you can see we are still on Windows. You know, this is this, don't forget that this is a virtual machine, so we are running it on inside Windows. Uh, so the desktop mesh, and then the hard mesh, and as you can see, yeah, this is the the, the famous uh, hard shape that we generated also in the previous video. In the, uh, inside Linux. So this this literally says that um, we are uh, able to to deal with Linux commands and programs on their uh, Windows and it is v quite cool actually that we can do that and uh, it means that you can use all the techniques that you know do you know I, I, I still emphasize this this is maybe the third time and the fourth time that I'm saying this but I want to emphasize that you can use all the techniques that you know for Linux under Windows with Windows subsystem for Linux. In the next video, I try to use MSYS. This is another technique that you can use the Linux commands and Linux knowledge under Windows. 
But using that, you can create Windows binaries, native Windows binaries, so native with exe files. So instead of this heart that, you know, this heart that is a file for Windows, but actually binary executable file for Linux. So if I say that, for example, file heart, oops, sorry, file heart, it says that it's a, it's, it's a binary version. It's a, something that is dynamically linked with the other files and this is actually uh, unexecutable. But for Windows, it's just a file because, yeah, it doesn't understand what that is. But uh, there are also techniques that can use Linux tools and libraries and compilers, tool chains to create Windows binaries. And in the next video, we, we, we try to cover one of the techniques that is very useful. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful and uh, see you in next videos. Bye.